Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and before I talk about today's topic, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for over a thousand subscribers. I honestly never expected this channel to get so big so fast when I started a little over two months ago. Your support means the world to me. So today I'm going to show you how I get a good 8x10 crop for Instagram without ruining my composition. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is I used to get really frustrated with the 8x10 crop Instagram basically requires us to use. To circumvent this, I used to put white borders on all my images so the full 2x3 would show, but statistically speaking, photos that have a native 8x10 crop and fill up more of the screen get more likes on average. When I found this out, I started just letting Instagram kind of crop my images to the 8x10, and a lot of times, it would ruin my composition. Sure, I could shoot my photos a little wider, and that would lead to a photo that would be more conducive to cropping in, but I was always taught to fill your frame and get your composition right in camera, so that wasn't really an option for me because it had become basically second nature by then. So I had given up on the idea of being able to get a good crop on Instagram and I just figured you know what if people want to see my work as it was originally intended they can check it out on 500px or my website or whatever. But then I had an idea. What if I just expanded the background to fill it and make it look more like it was shot to be an 8x10 and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to select our crop tool. You can also do this by hitting C on the keyboard if you like to use shortcuts, which I'm a pretty big fan of. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do this drop down up here. And then we're going to select 4x5 or 8x10 because that is what Instagram is. And now that's going to do this. And you can, of course, if you want to select something. So say I, this is the my frustration with uh, the Instagram crop here. I have all this other data here. So if I wanted to do a 8x10 crop, without doing the expanding of the background, I, and I wanted to include the top of her hat, so a little bit of that showed in the background, I would have to cut off the bottom of her dress. That's really, really frustrating, because I the, that's not the intent of my original images. So what you can do is you can click down here and drag it, and then you can click up above and drag it again, and then hit confirm. Now, this is a checkerboard because right now it's transparent, but this is basically what I used to do. Uh, I would just fill this with white and this would be my photo and that's how I would post it with an 8x10. Now if, if you want to do this, you can do this. Uh, if, if these techniques I'm about to show you don't really work for your image, this is still a valid way to you know show your full 8x10 or 2x3 crop I should say within the 8x10 so it takes up the maximum amount of space on Instagram and shows your full intended image. But typically, like I said, this tends to get a little less likes and engagement. Uh, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Instagram is a finicky platform and uh, people are very picky with things. So it, it's best to kind of work with it and work around it um, than to try to fight it because I did that for a while and I noticed a pretty big increase when I stopped trying to fight it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit M for our marquee tool or you can go up here and select it as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just kind of click here on the edge of this and then we're going to drag it. And we want to kind of select the entire thing and then we're just going to kind of drag over. And now what this is going to do is it's going to select this bit. And now what I like to do is make a duplicate copy of what I've selected. So I'm going to hit control J and all that does is it brings up a separate layer where all that's on it is the area that was selected with the marquee tool. So now that we have that brought up, what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control T or Command T if you're on Mac, and then we're just going to click here and we're going to drag it over. Now, this is going to fill that in pretty easily. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Confirm. Now, this will work for a lot of images that don't have diagonal lines. As soon as you get diagonal lines going through an image, it tends to screw up. And I'm going to show another example on what, like how that happens and how to work around it later. But this is perfect for an image like this where the lines are all vertical. Actually, horizontal and vertical. I confuse the two often. Excuse me. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to do this the same uh, the same technique on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and come over here, drag it out. Now you don't want to get a hand or a body part because if you do, it will stretch that as well and it looks weird. So always be sure to watch your lines and what you're touching. Uh, so now we're going to just kind of drag that out along there and then we're going to hit, uh, we got to go back down a layer. I'm still on layer one. So if I were to duplicate this now, it would not pick up uh, anything. So let me just do that to show you what I'm talking about. See, it's if I hit Control J, it's going to say could not make it because layer select area is empty. 
So you definitely want to make sure you're on the right layer. Now that crop box was a little loose for my liking, so I'm gonna come back in and set it up again. Okay, and then we're gonna hit Control J or Command J, and then we're gonna hit Control T or Command T, and then we're gonna just drag this side over. And now let's go ahead and make this a group here, just so we can kind of toggle it on and off together. So I'm just gonna rename the group. I'm gonna put it to Crop Fix. So now we're gonna to toggle this on and off. Oops, <laughs> accidentally toggled the background layer. Uh, so now let's toggle this on and off. And it, as you can see, it, it just kind of stretches out those areas in a way that gives it that eight by 10 crop, but doesn't completely ruin our composition. And it, it can look a little unnatural at times. Um, and I mean, you are stretching the pixels, so it can make things more blurry. But for my style of photography, making things blurrier is only helpful uh, because I tend to shoot wide open with a lot of blurry backgrounds and stuff like that. So it's, it's really uh, conducive to the style that I like. So the other thing that it does is it kind of, with the stretch, it almost adds like a motion like towards the subject. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but like if you look at it, it kind of like the, it pulls you in almost in a way. So I find that this one works really, really, really well. And I'm just extremely happy that I kind of figured out how to do this and thought, you know what, this is a good way to work around the required Instagram crop. Okay, so now we're back on our second image. And the reason I wanted to do this one is because this has diagonal lines, which I had talked about in the last one being kind of complicated and tricky to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do the exact same method where I use the marquee tool to select it and then drag. And you'll see why that this is not exactly a good way to do this. So I uh, didn't make my crop yet. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and drag that out and make the crop. And I'm just going to check it, confirm it. So now back to the marquee tool and I'm going to go ahead and make my selection here. Like I said, you want to be careful. You're not hitting any kind of body part uh, because it will drag it as well. So just be careful of that. I had clipped a little bit of her shoulder on that first uh, lineup I made and I forgot to duplicate my background. So control J command J and control T or command T and now let's stretch it. Now you can already see how and why this is weird. It, it like, you can see this line is supposed to be coming through diagonally and then all of a sudden it just shoots over and it completely makes the image look wrong. So I'm just going to do this one more time so you can see why, like once again, I'm saying that this is not good. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, control J to duplicate, Command T, uh, Control T to transform. Just in case you haven't picked it up by now and you know you need me to say the shortcut, I don't want to confuse anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and group it together. And now you'll see this, uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, it, it completely kind of ruins it and the stretching of the background does not work here. So there is a way for us to work around it though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that so you can, I'm gonna to toggle it later so you can actually see the difference that you can make here. Um, so I want to actually crop back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit C to bring up the crop tool. And then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna select two by three. And the reason I wanna select two by three is I want to start with a two by three crop when doing this next method. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And now we're going to hit C again to bring up a crop tool or just click on the outside. And now we want to select four by five or eight by 10 once more. Now, see, this goes back to uh, the original thing that I was talking about with the Instagram crop. If I wanted to post this on Instagram and I didn't do anything to the background, this is the crop they would give me. If I didn't want to cut off the top of her head, I would have to cut off her hand. If I didn't want to cut off her hand, I'd have to cut off the top of her head. So it really kind of boxes you in creatively if you don't take this step. Uh, it, it can really ruin your composition, which is exactly what I'm trying to illustrate and make the point here. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to expand this to 
the area where we would like to have our crop. Uh, and now this is an option if you want to slightly change it to be a, a little bit better for 8x10, but you don't want to do the dragging as well. And like I said, this works really well for ones with diagonal lines or something like that because it just looks awful otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of make a new selection. And I want a little bit of room on the hand. I want a little bit of room on the top of the head and like that. So now, before we confirm this crop, what we want to do is we want to check up here where it says content aware. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to analyze the photo and then try to fill in the outside of it with what it thinks it would have looked like. So this is using uh, Adobe's content aware algorithm, and it basically just kind of tries to fake what it thinks should be in an area you're healing, or in this case, cropping outwards. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that and hit that check. And now you're going to see it's going to load and then boom, it just fills it in pretty much instantly in a way that looks really natural. Now, there is times where that this will create a little bit of artifacting. And what you want to do in that case is you'll want to just kind of like zoom in like up here. You can see there's some banding here in this little area. So what you want to do is you want to zoom in and then hit J to bring up your healing brush. And right now it's on the spot healing brush. You want to select the original healing brush. So that way you can sample where you want and then hold down alt and give it a sample and then just kind of paint over areas that might be a little problematic. And I don't want to get too close because as you saw, it's starting to get dark in some areas. So I don't want to get too close to it, but I want to heal this little bit of artifacting here. Okay. Uh, I could try to make this area that's a little brighter blend more uh, if I wanted to spend some time on that. Uh, it's a little dark over there for me. And when you're zoomed in like this, it's not its not always going to look this bad from afar. Um, Okay, so that kind of got rid of that bright spot, and it's not really too noticeable that I did healing. You can see there's a little bit of a dark patch there. Uh, if I wanted to spend a really long time on this, I could uh, just hit B for the brush tool, and then I could just sample this color here like that. And we'll go with like a 5% flow. So hold down Shift, then hit 0, 5. And just sample and start painting in a little bit here, just so we don't get that like really obnoxious color change. Uh, sometimes it's like too obvious. So let's go ahead and just quick toggle that to make sure we didn't kind of harm our case more than we helped it by doing that little bit of healing and stuff. So that's before and that's after. I think it definitely kind of helped it blur together. It, it was a little hard with that. Uh, I'm not really happy with it. I would normally spend a little more time tweaking this to get it just right, but I wanted to show you how to like kind of fix things like that. And I'm just checking my edges here to make sure there's nothing that's a uh, giveaway. We faked our crop. Uh, one thing is this little divot here, repeating here. That's kind of a bit of a giveaway that, hey, they did do something. You can see there's a line here as well. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my healing brush. So I'm going to hit J. And I'm just going to kind of like go along this line here and just sample around the outside and just kind of blend it a bit more. And now I don't want this to repeat because that's a dead giveaway because that can happen on wood, but it's not going to happen straight up. So I'm going to just go ahead and blend that in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hit B for a brush tool. I'm just going to sample this black and I'm just going to paint it in here because it's probably a little easier than trying to blend the colors with the healing brush tool. And that just kind of gets rid of that. And now it's not as much of a giveaway that, yeah, they did copy that little section because you don't want to be able to see tracks of where there was work done. Uh, so I'm just brushing in a little bit more black here. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that's the second way to do this. And let's go ahead and toggle this on so we can see the other option. Like, so Here's with the content aware and then the healing to it. And this is with the stretching of the background. And you can see the stretching has a line there from where it can kind of tell. And right there, there's also the line. And that just, it does not look good. It, it ruins it. Uh, and it, it's not conducive to what we were trying to do and making it look more realistic and continue to kind of 
shape the background to what we want it to be and have good composition. So I hope this was able to help you guys today. And if you learned something, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as people are learning and my content is being shared, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.